In the last video, we used DVC pipelines to track how data sets, models, and code are all connected. Now we can take this approach a little bit further and use DVC to track experiments in a machine learning project. Here, we're going to learn how to use DVC and Git to compare model metrics and even data viz across different versions of a pipeline. All right, so in the last video, we had created a DVC pipeline that did things like prepare some raw data, featureize it, and then train a model. Um, and if you didn't do these steps with me in the last video and you want to follow along on your machine, then you will want to catch up before attempting you know, what I'm about to show you. Um, but if you just want to watch, that's cool too. So what we're going to do is add a final stage evaluate where we will evaluate the model that we've trained and we're going to report a metric about it. Um, so I'm going to go to our docs again and I'm going to uh, just copy because this is a pretty lengthy kind of command here. Um, so we're copying DVC run, which is a helper function that lets us add um, a stage to our pipeline. And that will automatically add this nicely formatted, you know, human modifiable YAML right here. So now we've got the stage evaluate. And just like in our previous stages, we have a command that we're going to run. We have some dependencies, but now we have metrics. So metrics, um, we've got a file scores.json, and then we've got this little detail here, um, cache false, won't go too deep into that right now, um, but just kind of note it. So we've got scores.json, and we also have a plots field, and this is prc.json. And so scores.json is um, a JSON that just contains AUC, area under the curve. So um, the code problem that we're working with is a classification problem. Um, so we have AUC, which is a pretty typical measure um, you know, for understanding classifiers. And in this PRC, we have a precision recall curve. And it looks a little funny when you read it, but it's uh, essentially three arrays represented in JSON. We have a precision a recall and a threshold array, and we just have a lot of a lot of points here. Okay, so um, when we ran that last, you know, DVC run and we added the stage, we were prompted that maybe we should do, you know, a git add. Um, and in fact, I'm going to do that because of I want to save the experiment at this, you know, point in time. Um, so you can kind of think of taking a git add and commit as taking a snapshot of the project at this moment in time. So I'm saying I want a snapshot this moment in time when my score was this absolutely mediocre AUC value. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do git add. I'm just going to do everything. Git commit. A.m. Create evaluation pipeline. All right. Cool. And now I'm going to, let's see, give us a little bit of a clean slate here. Okay. So um, we can now try to change some things up and see how our metrics change. So let's go to our params.yaml file, which you might remember from our DVC YAML is, you know, it contains some parameters for key stages like prepare or featureize our data. So changing the parameters that are stored in params can, you know, they might affect the outcome of our pipeline. So if we go to params.yaml, and let's change in the featureize stage, let's change this to 1500 and let's go ngrams2. Um, basically this is, you know, not to go too deep into it because it's not really the focus, but we're going to try to, you know, give our features a bit more capacity to pick up on some interesting relationships in our data set. So we were, you know, opening up the space of possible features a bit and maybe something cool will happen. So I don't have to now remember to run featureize again. I can actually just run DVC repro. I can reproduce the whole pipeline um, and kind of cool. It will not rerun prepare because prepare didn't change. It's not dependent on, you know, featureize, but we will rerun the featureize stage. And then because we have rerun that and it has new, you know, new results, we're going to be rerunning train as well as the evaluation stage. 
Okay, cool. So how do we compare anything? You know, so presumably our scores changed. Yep, scores.json did indeed change. All right, so here's what I can do now. I'm gonna use this function, dvc diff, and this will summarize how the parameters that are stored in this params.yaml file have changed now versus in my last commit, right? And now if I do dvc metric diff, cool. Okay, now it's gonna tell me how have my metrics changed from my last commit. Um, and that's good, we're moving in the right direction. And now let's do dvc plot stiff and I'm adding in these arguments x and y. Um, you can read up on the docs if you wanna know a little bit more, but I'm just kind of formatting my plot, deciding, okay, what do I want on the x and y axis out of this, you know, the several arrays that are in prc.json. Okay, so now I can take this file and I can open that up in my browser. And boom, there we go. We've got a precision recall curve. Cool, and what we're comparing is what is um, on our last commit on this branch to where we are in our workspace in orange. Um, pretty cool. Okay, so now if I wanted to save where I'm at again, I could do one more git commit, but I don't have to, I could say eh, you know, I don't, I'm not really that enthusiastic about this. Um, so one thing that you might notice right now is that we kind of have, if you want to save an experiment and some results, you would mark that with a git commit, but just know that currently we are working on making some lightweight commits. So essentially you don't have to remember to make a git commit or clog up your git history. Every time you get a new result, they will be saved locally. So in a cache of sorts so that you can revisit them um, and you don't have to have them all in your git history if you don't want to, but that's coming in the future. Now you've seen a little bit about how experiment tracking works in DVC. This approach lets you track all your experiments in your Git history, which is great for exploring big hypotheses across Git commits or Git branches. Now there's lots more that you can do, so keep up in the docs if you want to keep learning and stay tuned for some very cool new features in the way that DVC tracks experiments. For now, GV and I thank you for watching and learning with us.